Alright, this is Ikanke from Blue Steel Auto School again. Um, it's a messy, rainy day today, but it's not going to matter much for what we're discussing today. Today I'm going to explain to you how to make a good first impression on your DMV examiner. Right? Um, first things first, this should go without saying. Just be polite. Be cordial. Right. Unfortunately, you know, they're not always polite and cordial. You have some very nice, cool ones. You have some rude ones, you know, but that's life, unfortunately. You know, you go to a McDonald's, you don't know who you're getting at the, at the register, right? Um, you know, but you can only control you. You can't control how other people are. So it's just 10 to 15 minutes of your life. Getting into an argument with them isn't doing you any favors. You know that they have something that you want. Right? You know, so just keep your cool for 10 to 15 minutes. Right? Say hello, good morning, good afternoon, whatever. How are you doing? Have your paperwork ready when you get out of the car. Hand them your paperwork. Right? Your your um, five hour plan certificate. And your then they'll tell you, okay, you can come around to the car, you sit down at the driver's side, and you go through your routine, which I'm sure you've been taught before. Seat, mirrors, belt. Right? You adjust your seat for the proper position for you to be able to see properly and control properly. Then you adjust your mirror, you adjust the rear view mirror so that you can see the entire rear windshield and the side mirrors here. Left and right. Alright, the key should be in this position. Alright. So this is the off position here. Alright. And then you put it into this position to adjust your mirror. If you have a push button, you would just press the button without pressing the brake. Alright, if you press the brake and press the button, you're gonna start the car, which is good for when you wanna start the car. But now they don't want you to start. Right, right now you're just getting yourself situated. Right, you have you don't need permission to do your seat mirror belt, but you need permission to start the car. So if they didn't say start the car, don't start the car. Your mirror control over here, right? For this car anyway, you see the L and R switch to adjust the mirror and the pad to move the selected mirror. Okay. Um so you do your seat, your mirrors, of course, make sure your belt is on, right? You don't want to drive off on your road test without your belt on. Um, if you do, by chance, I mean, some, some of them will automatically fail you, right? Um, but some of them understand that you're nervous. So if you happen to drive off without your seatbelt on, don't panic and try to put your seatbelt on right away while you're in motion. Right, the best thing to do is say, oh, I, I'm sorry, I forgot my seatbelt. And you signal, you look, right, mirror and shoulder, and then you pull over safely, put your seatbelt on when the car is stationary. Don't try to put your seatbelt on while you're moving. Right? And then you proceed again. If you're still in drive, you, you know, put it in, you leave it in drive, or put it in drive if you have put it in park. You signal, turn the wheel, and look, just like you're going to do when you when you first start right so you do your seat mirrors and belt you wait until the examiner says okay you can start the car then you start the car all right um then you still have to wait for them to tell you to pull out all right now this is where i mean a lot of people fail here i don't know why because it's something that we've discussed several times you know when you're leaving the curb, the other traffic has the right of way. You can't just pull out and and not look, right? Because that can cause a serious accident, right? So you make sure you put your car in drive, you signal to the left, and you turn the wheel one time to the left. So remember that when you first get into the car, see mirrors belt, right? Then you wait for permission to start the car. Then you wait for permission to move the car. When they give you permission to move the car, gear, this is your gear here, signal, your signal is right here, right, up for right, down for left, and you're going to be going left, and wheel, 
you turn the wheel. Right? That simple. Now, now those three steps are to get the car ready to move. And then you have to make sure it's safe to move. So remember, you're not the only person out here. I'm sure you see while we're doing the video, all these cars going by. If I just decide to start the car and just go, I could hit somebody and it would be my fault. All right? They have the right of way because I'm the one leaving the curb. All right? They're already on the travel, on the path, the traveling path, right? So you sig you know, you do your gear signal wheel, you, you then have to check your mirror. You have to check this mirror, make sure it's clear. And then you have to check your blind spot. Absolutely check your blind spot, all right? If you don't check your blind spot, that's like five to 10 points right there, all right? And remember, you only have 30 points to work with. You don't wanna give up points for foolishness, you know? You, you wanna save the points for something that you really probably, you know, didn't see or, or, or couldn't help, right? Um, and try to avoid automatic fails, of course. Right? But not looking is a silly reason to get points or to fail your test. Because if you, if you are lucky enough to not look but nothing be there, you're going to get points. But if you're unlucky enough to not look and then there's something there, you're going to fail your test right then and there. All right? And no, there's no second chances. I don't know why people think that. Anything on the test that's going to cause an accident is going to fail you. All right? You know, no if ands, or buts about it. And don't say, oh, it was just one mistake. No, that's a major mistake, All right? So there's different tiers. You have minor mistakes, you have moderate mistakes, you have major mistakes, and automatic fails, All right? Um, depending on the dis examiner, they have discretion. All right, they have this, even some of the some of the moderate and major mistakes can be upgraded to automatic fails depending on the circumstances, depending on on how they feel. All they have to say is I didn't feel safe or I didn't feel comfortable or I had to take control of the car. They have to press the brake or reach for the wheel, you know, or they have to tell you, "Did you see that car? Did you see that pedestrian? Did you see that bicycle?" All right? If, if they have to say anything like that, you're you're not going to pass your test. Because you're supposed to be observant, you're supposed to see what's going on around you and act accordingly. You have to know when you have the right of way and when you don't. And when you're leaving the curb, you do not have the right of way. If you do not have the right of way, that means you have to yield to whoever does have the right of way. All right? So a lot of students, they pull away and they pull right back because the examiner has to press the brake or grab the wheel because they were cutting somebody off, right? It's very important, I, I can't stress it enough. It's very important that you pay attention to what's coming from behind when you're about to leave the curb. Right? And then from there on, just try to be very attentive to what they're saying. Pay attention to them. If they're telling you to turn right and you're turning left, some of them will fail you for that. Some of them might you know, let it go the first time, but you have to know you're right from left, and then you have to pay attention to whether they say right or left. All right, just move the car smoothly. All right, be observant, um, yield the right away when you're supposed to, show them you know how to do your, man your maneuvers. You know, just for parking and three point turns and leaving the curb is simply. Four steps, A, B, C, D, right? One, two, three, four. Gear, signal, wheel, observe. Gear, signal, wheel, observe. Over and over again, right? Just think about it. What gear do I want to be in? Am I going forward or backwards? Am I going left or right? That determines which way you signal. That also determines which way you turn the wheel, right? And then before you move the car, so gear, signal, wheel gets the car ready to move, before you move the car, you must make sure it's safe to move the car, right? So you have to look first before you allow the car to move. So that whole time when you're going through gear, signal, wheel, and observe, your foot is on the brake and you're making sure it's clear, then you get to your next position, all right? And then gear, signal, wheel, and observe, make, you know, you make sure it's clear, next position, 
gear signal will observe you you get the you get the routine you get the pattern if you could just follow that pattern over and over again and you know when it's safe and when it isn't safe then you shouldn't have a problem All right and if you can do that you're going to pass your test with flying colors all right if you have any questions or comments feel free to subscribe like you know let us know what you think and we'll let you know when the next video is coming out or you'll know right so again from blue still auto school take care wish you the best